ladies and gentlemen, from the site where legends are made, Caesar's Palace of Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the multicolored trunk and weighing in at 139 pounds, a young man who captured Olympic gold in 1992 and now has a perfect professional record of 21 victories without a loss, 19 knockouts, and he has won three world title belts. Tonight, he goes for world title number four. Ladies and gentlemen, from East Los Angeles, California, presenting the challenger, three-time world champion and reigning WBO lightweight champion of the world, the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, also weighing in at exactly 139 pounds. Wearing white, trimmed with blue and red, he brings a professional record into the ring of 97 victories, 79 knockouts with only one loss and one draw. One of the finest in the history of boxing. In that record, he has won five world title bouts and is considered by many as one of the greatest fighters of the last half century. Ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros, from Culiacan, Mexico, presenting the five-time world champion and reigning WBC super lightweight champion of the world, Julio Cesar Okay, Julio, Oscar, that you need that record in Camerino. I gave you the fights in the dressing room. I won a good, clean fight. Can I play Olympia? This is mano. Dios los bendiga los dos. Jim, this is youth, talent, ambition against experience, will, and pride. A fight that may be as simple as the power and speed of youth or as complicated as the will of a great warrior. Both fighters sparred upwards of 300 rounds at altitude in preparation for this. De La Hoya says he's in the best shape of his life. Chavez says he's in the best shape since March 17, 1990. His dramatic comeback win over Meldrick Taylor. First punch of the fight is a De La Hoya jab. start for De La Hoya, who seems anxious to see what Chavez wants to do. If Oscar sticks with the jab, George, the challenge for Julio will be to get inside it somehow. That's right. Not only should Oscar establish the dominancy of his jab, but do not allow Chavez to hit him with one jab. In other words, take away Chavez's jab at the same time that he's establishing his own. That's right. Don't allow him to think that he's Already can there is a all. cut There's alongside a the left eye of Chavez. It looks like a scrape. It's not dangerous, but it's very early in the fight for blood to be showing. It came from the one right cross that Delahoy landed, and now more blood as Delahoy again lands with the right. And Chavez is already starting to flow above the left eye. Is landing that right hand, George. This is a veteran. He didn't come here tonight to lose the fight in one round. Oscar, stick the plan. If the jab open up the cut, stick with the jab. It may be a more dangerous cut than I first thought. Chavez was cut over the same eye in the first round of his tough decision victory over David Kamau. Now, Joe Cortez stopped because he wants a doctor to take a look at the cut. Round one. And this blood started flowing less than a minute into the fight. That 
cut what was open in training. You can believe that. Hard to imagine that one right hand could have done that much damage, but it came after De La Hoya landed his first right cross. Yeah, it was a big cover-up. And Chavez suddenly has more purpose. I think he realizes that this fight could be stopped sooner or later by cut. He's, he's going to try to engage De La Hoya right here. That, of course, has never happened to Julio Cesar Chavez in 99 previous recorded bouts. No, he did have a cut, if you recall, in his second fight with Frankie Randall, Jim. Yes, but you're suggesting the fight could be stopped, Larry, and that fight was stopped because of an unintentional headbutt cut. This one was caused by a punch. You're right. Round one has been like Christmas for Oscar De La Hoya. There's already desperation in Chavez. We go to two Spanish-speaking corners tonight. Our interpreter is Hector Garcia. Are you okay, Julio? Stay calm. The, the cut is pretty deep. We're going to have to play by ear. I think that cut is pretty bad. He's not bleeding now. Just give me the towel. Okay. Okay, De La Hoya threw 52 punches by punch stat count in round one. Chavez only 18. How does the cut change Julio's strategy, George? Well, he didn't intend to be so aggressive just early. Chavez did not. Now he's having to put on some aggression to keep Oscar at bay. And this just isn't the kind of strategy he wanted. He wanted to play it cool for the first three or four rounds. De La Hoya, just stick with the jab and the plan, right? That's right. De La Hoya starts trying to open up this cut with too many right hands. The fight goes into the fourth round. Chavez gets renewed strength and courage, and he can change everything. Keep your cool, keep jabbing. De La Hoya is still picking his shots here in the first minute of round number two. So far, the blood not flowing again on Chavez's left side. It has started again, Jim. for Chavez because he's been missing with that left hook because of the height difference. Get your chin down and throw that hook. It's a different thing. De La Hoya landed two you, short left hooks in there. Chavez came back with a counter right. Chavez and many of them silenced by the visible flow of blood. Ho, ho, ho! De La Hoya has allowed uh, Chavez to relax a little bit. He shouldn't have allowed him that relaxation because he started to think and realize, hey, I am the master of this ring. I've been around a long time. You gotta stay on him, do something at all times. De La Hoya has to. Yet in two rounds so far, George, Chavez has been unable to engage get close to De La Hoya and do any kind of damage. But that's the way he fights. 
He's never won the fight one or two rounds. He gets closer and closer, and he starts to take over. Now, if he can just remember that, then time. Don't do nothing strange. Come here. Come here. We're going back to round one to show you the punches that open the cut on the left eye of Chavez. And that was a left jab to the left eye of Chavez. Normally you would expect a right hand to open the cut there, but this was a crisp left jab to the eye. Entirely correct, and the right hand that I have talked Certainly. about came after that, so uh, it landed and caused the cut even earlier than might have first appeared to be the case. Statistically, through the first couple of rounds, De La Hoya throwing more than twice as many punches as Chavez. And you can see that Harold Letterman has given the first two rounds to the 23-year-old challenger. Oscar De La Hoya is starting to land jabs to the stomach. That's very important if you're fighting a puncher to take his power away from him in case the fight goes longer than five or six rounds. But it's also going to bring his chin down into Chavez's punching range, isn't it? No, De La Hoya is landing the left jab to the body, which means Chavez's power will start to diminish as the fight goes on. De La Hoya is starting to lean down a little too much, and that's dangerous for him. One thing Chavez has not done, he has always wor worn down his opponents, George, by punching to the body, I don't believe, in two oh, rounds plus that, that he's landed a body Let's punch yet. Let's go. That's because of that early cut. Sometimes you get a little hesitant. Chavez has got to realize it's going to happen close. It's not going to, anything is going to happen from the outside. You got to get close. They stay out for the time being in De La Hoya's punching range. And he continues to control Chavez with the jab and with body punches. And Chavez going backwards more than we've ordinarily seen him go backwards. For good reasons. Oscar De La Hoya has a jab like an ordinary right hand by the average fighter. That jab hurts you. It makes you want to stay away. Hard left hand to the body by De La Hoya as Chavez came in close. Then De La Hoya hey, backed up to try come to find hey, punching hey, range again. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, come on. Give me three rounds. Give me three rounds. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. That's an old Willie Pep move there. Hard counter oh, left hey, inside oh, there hey. by De La Hoya as Chavez was stepping in. Oscar lands the uppercut and a right hand. Chavez was able to get a little closer that time. Although he's missing from outside, he was able to get a little closer. He's going to have to take a lot of leather to get in close, George, unless he can find a better formula. And he should have uh, included that on the cost of the house when he took this bout. You're going to have to take some and give some, too. Take a lot and give some. De La Hoya getting just a little bit more aggressive now as the clock winds down in the third. for the moment seems without a clear plan as to how to get inside of De La Hoya's jam. Good left hook by Chavez. It was right on top of the brow. But so far, Chavez has looked his age. Use your right hand also. Okay. Okay, Pastor, let me see. Yeah, no problem. It's no problem. No problem. Yeah. No problem. 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 No
Round four begins. Oscar De La Hoya to this moment throwing 30 jabs per round. And now Chavez seems to believe he has no more time to wait. And he's starting to look like he's 23 years old. Whenever he throws more than three punches, he looks young. Chavez getting in a left hook in close. And he brings the crowd out of their seats as he tries to mount the attack in the first minute of round four. And in that exchange, Jim, De La Hoya landed a nice left hand on the jaw. It didn't face Chavez. Well, we know what a great chin the Warrior has. Julio Cesar Chavez down only once in 99 previous bouts. And that was from an accumulation of punishment against Frankie Randall. Oscar's a good fighter, but he hasn't concentrated on winning a fight on point in years. This could be a deficit for him because he's been getting knockouts, looking for knockouts. Now you're in a fight where you may have to build up some points in case you don't get this knockout. He did score a tough decision victory over John John Molina early in 1995. When others say Oscar hasn't been pressured or roughed up in the ring, his supporters point to that fight and say, oh, yes, he has. And we may have some judges tonight who may like the aggression of uh, Cesar Chavez. Yeah, but he's not being the aggressor. Hard left hook by Chavez. That is the third good left hook that Chavez has landed. All to the chin. All because Oscar De La Hoya stands and waits for him to do something if he's not jabbing. You can't stand and wait. You got to do something. But Chavez, at the same time that he's mounting his best attack of the fight, continues to paw at his left eye, trying to keep the blood from hampering his vision. De La Hoya much more tentative now here in round four, having tasted some of Chavez's power. Good short left hook by De La Hoya. And he comes back with a right hand. And the blood bothering Julio as De La Hoya lands a vicious left hook. is starting to be himself now. Forget about all of that strategy and the new guy in your corner. Get out there and be yourself. Brutal left hook to the body by De La Hoya. Chavez's will seeming to be sapped now as in the last minute of round four it's been all Oscar De La Hoya. Now he's... Chavez, De La Hoya goes back to the stomach which is ideal for a youngster. I can't believe it. And Cortez takes Chavez to flip Homansky. Stay in our corner. Stay in our corner. He's calling the fight. The fight is over. Nothing, George, do they call him the golden boy. The combination of a skillful performance, maybe just a little bit of good fortune. Chavez's bloody mask at the end, simply too grotesque for Homansky to allow the fight to continue. But guys, the old guy was never in this fight because the young guy didn't let him get in there. He maintained his poise. He used his own strength. This kid is like a debutante with a knife in her purse. He looks like he looks like the golden boy, but he's got some iron and lead in those gloves. And if anyone was looking for the answer in round four, when Chavez mounted his fiercest attack of the fight, De La Hoya starts him with a left hook, turned matters around, and dominated the last minutes before the stoppage. It reminds me of Clint Eastwood in The Unforgiven. He said, I'm, 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 well, I've always been lucky at killing people. <laughs> De La Hoya seems to be a little lucky at doing this stuff. When you're both good and lucky, that's a heck of a tough combination to beat. Well, let's throw away luck. He was good. George, he was terrific tonight. He put the right hand with the jab and then brought the left hook. And that in the end was the difference. Let's take a look at this flurry toward the end of the bout. Jab, right cross, left hook, 
left hook again, right cross across the top of the head, left hook, left hook again, a short right. Not all of those punches landing flush, but all of them stopping Chavez from being able to mount any kind of attack. And that's what Oscar De La Hoya, my only worry was for him, that he would not be himself and do what he normally does best. In the end, he simply smothered Chavez with speed and power. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joe Cortez calls a halt to the bout. Dr. Flip Homansky has ruled that the former champion Julio Cesar Chavez was unable to continue because of severe lacerations to the eyes. The winner, by technical knockout, winning his fourth world title belt and new WBC Super Lightweight Champion of the World, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Well, as a useful piece of trivia, no longer meaningful here, it's worth noting that Oscar De La Hoya won all three rounds on all three judges' cards to start the fight, so there was no funny scoring uh, at that early stage of the bout. And what a performance in round four, George. It's strange because Chavez was doing the best he could. And ordinarily against anyone else, that best would have been good enough. But this guy is a little better than best. De La Hoya, phenomenon. That's what he is. We'll see how Oscar feels about it. Larry Merchant's with him in the ring. Oscar, congratulations to the fight first. How did the cut eye change the fight in your judgment? Well, in my judgment, Julio Cesar Chavez had something more to worry about in his corner. We knew if a cut, a broken nose, or if he was hurt, that would change all that during the fight. So that's what we try to accomplish early on in the round. Well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by what you just said, that you knew if something like that happened, he would have a problem? Well, Julio Cesar Chavez, once they attack him, once he knows that he can back up a fighter, He's in trouble. He's lost. And what we try to do, we, we, that's, that's our, that was our game plan, our, men, our mental game plan, to have him think up in his corner. Because when he's thinking, wow, this guy throws hard jabs, this guy throws left hooks, and then the cut occurs, he has something else to worry about. Instead of, uh, instead of his boxing, boxing tactics, he has a cut to worry about. So you weren't surprised after that cut that he didn't seem to be the uh, relentless aggressor that he was at his best. Well, Julio Cesar Chavez was still the aggressor. He was still putting pressure. He's a true warrior. He's a true champion. But the blood, the cuts, the broken nose was affecting him. You say the broken nose. Do you know that he, you broke his nose as well? It fell on my left hook as if I hit a good, solid left hook, and the blood just started gushing out like Janar Hernandez's nose the way I did to his. All right, we're going to take a look at a replay of the punches that caused the cut. Describe what you see. Well, right here I was throwing the jabs. I think that right, that straight jab, that's when the, cut, the blood started coming down. That jab right there, stiff, straight jab that we were working on. What did it feel like to see him in so much trouble, to see the blood gushing from his eye, this legend, and the chances getting larger and larger that you were going to take him? Well, I was very surprised because uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, he's known to get cut. He's known to have a, a very tender nose. But I really didn't think that my stiff jab was going to cause a, a big gash over the eye. I guess I was wrong. I, I kind of try to uh, stay humble about my punches because I believe now my punching power is pretty strong. But of course, still, we have much to learn in the gym. What do you feel now about how... Mexican and Mexican-American fans will treat you having won this fight in this fashion. Well, I hope they're on my side, and hopefully there, there's some that are on my side, because I want to, I want to try to be like Julio Cesar Chavez. I want to try to be like the great champion that he is, and he will still be the great champion of the future, because he's a, he's a great person inside the ring and outside the ring. Thank you very much, Oscar. Jim? The master plan for Oscar De La Hoya appears to call George for one more fight at 140 pounds and then up to 147 where there are a lot of big-name opponents 
potential big money fight, do you think he'll carry his punching power up another seven pounds in weight? Yeah, I do believe because this guy has a tendency to train real hard. And if you train hard, the power seems to follow you up no matter what weight you go. Most guys try to put on the extra weight, and they don't take the hard training along with them. But this guy trains hard, so power follows. All right, let's take a look at a punch stat profile of what happened in three-plus rounds. De La Hoya landing 94 punches to only 35 for Chavez. Much higher connect percentage. De La Hoya was controlling the fight with his jab, throwing 30 jabs per round in the first three rounds. And as you'll see, as they went two minutes, 27 seconds in the fourth round, De La Hoya was still throwing 30 jabs per round. Now let's go to Larry Merchant, who is with the beaten Julio Cesar Chavez. Julio, how did the cut change the fight for you? Yeah, see, ustedes vieron que que fue un golpecito. Yo ya estaba un poco lastimado de la ceja. He was already he was already hurt uh, uh, over his eyebrow from uh, previously. Entonces yo no quise posponer la pelea definitivamente. I really didn't want to postpone the fight because of it. Ustedes vieron que el golpe que ni siquiera me tentó, nomás fue un rayón y entonces se me abrió la cortada ya ya no pude no podía ver del ojo. You guys didn't notice it was uh, just a uh, minor punch and uh, it just eso, opened the cut. Pero eso de que Oscar de la Hoya tenga una pegada fuerte sinceramente no. But really that uh, that Oscar de la Hoya has a big punch really doesn't. Nada, no sentí, really su, doesn't. No, no sentí su pegada, simplemente no no podía ver. I didn't even feel his punches. I just couldn't see because of the blood. Pero voy a voy a volver, voy a volver, voy a ganar las peleas y y voy a estar ya en buena en buena con mis cejas. But I I will I'm going to come back. I'm going to fight another two more fights and then I'm going to give a rematch. Yo sabía que esto podía pasar muy rápidamente. I just knew this could happen very very fast. Pero ya, pero eran tres meses de preparación, era mucho pérdida de dinero. It was uh, through, uh, three months of preparation for this and I didn't want to uh, cancel because uh, of the amount uh, of cut. Uh, George Foreman uh, speculated when that happened